welcome everyone to a very special tutorial for those who have suffered a broken heart. This could be from the death of a loved one or, or even uh, experiencing a brokenness of trust or of future plans through illness. This is based on the Kintsugi art of repairing broken pottery with gold. They will take a uh, broken plate, a broken bowl, and they will repair it with a special kind of tree sap that they make into a lacquer. And then after it has been securely put back together, they will gild all of the seams with 24 karat powdered gold. And this is to emphasize the beauty of the healing and the mending, but that the scars will remain precious. So that's the theme of our design today. I made a heart-shaped stone from the mold from the Happy Dotting Company, and a link for that is in the comments below. And I used the UltraCal gypsum cement to make this stone. It took about a day and a half for it to cure, and then I painted it black, and it is ready to use now. So I'm using the same mold. I just photocopied it, and I'm cutting out the heart on the top because I want the heart to be the right shape. And I'm going to place that on the top and use my General's Charcoal White Pencil to trace an outline on top of the art stone. That's going to give me guidelines for the interior design. First, I'm going to dot the outline. However, I'm using the Martha Stewart Wedding Cake White Acrylic and a toothpick. And I'll just be dotting that guideline with very small dots, trying to get them close together but not touching, and all approximately the same size. So as the toothpick builds up with paint, I'll wipe it off and keep dotting. So just get them as close as you can. Make sure your paint is thick enough that your little dots don't pull out and touch one another. Work down one side, and then I go backwards to reach that point, and then continue on up the other side of the stone. Just like that. Now if you have any mistakes, you can take it off quickly with a Q-tip, and then just repaint. I used the Martha Stewart Beetle Black for my black satin on the base of this stone. So I'm just going to use my tiny brush and cover up where I wiped it off. Now I'm going to let this dry and I'm going to paint a few more because I like to do a bunch of stones at once. And then I'm going to use a wet Q-tip to take off the guideline. So all we have remaining are the dots. And I'm going to do that on each of the stones. Now the first stone I've decided to do in blue tones. So mix up five different shades of the color you would like to use. I'm going to start with the blue. So not only am I doing light to dark, but I'm also changing the hue a little bit by making it a little bit more purpley or a little bit more turquoise. And I'm using a combination of heavy bodied acrylic mixed with the golden fluid acrylic for really bright, vibrant colors. And if your paints are too thick, you can add the Liquitex pouring medium. And if they are too thin, you can use the Liquitex gel medium or the iridescent and that will thicken up your paints nicely. But mine are a good consistency. I mix them up in these little cups with lids so I can uh, continue to use them on other projects. And I'm going to start with medium and small dots in the darkest shade all around the outside of the heart. And just sort of randomly place them. You don't want them to be in any particular pattern but use a combination of different sizes as you're going through here. The randomness is what helps all of this blend together nicely. So once you have your darkest shade in, you can go back with your next shade and work your way toward the center of the stone, but you always work your way backward as well. You want the two to blend together, so I'll use my toothpick to go back into the darker shade with the lighter shade so we get a blending effect. Just start filling in as many spaces as you can and then move on to other shades. 
Now I like to spray mine with the blow dryer in between the colors just to form a skin on the acrylic paint so the dots will not pool out as I'm working and this just helps give them more definition. And you can see how they're getting in together. I still have a lot of spaces to go yet so I'm moving to another shade of blue and I'm going to start filling in these spaces and working my way toward the center. And some of the dots I'll make bigger just by swirling them a little bit. And then filling in as I go. And sometimes I'll go back and, and load up a dot with more paint to, to uh, make it taller to give the design a little bit more texture. So now I've gotten all the way to the middle with the lightest shade and I'm really starting to fill in. And then I'm going to go back and fill in all the tiny spaces back into the lighter shades all the way to the edge using little tiny micro dots of the very lightest blue. This is just going to make your design a little bit more vibrant. So that one is done and I'm going to allow that to dry completely and while that is drying I've decided to do another one in red. So I've mixed up five shades of red and instead of fading to pink I'm fading to orange because I wanted it to stay a little bit more vibrant. And again filling back in with the lightest shade just to brighten it up a little bit. So there's the pink one, pink and red. A little bit of orange in the middle just to make it glow. And the third one I decided to do in the purple and lavender. After you stare at these stones for a while, you will see empty spaces that you didn't see before. And I suggest just turning the stone, changing the lighting, just going back and you'll say, oh, how did I miss that space? And you'll go back and you'll get it with a little tiny dot and eventually you'll get this all filled in. And there's the purple one. So I'm going to let these dry completely. And then I'm going to put on my gold Kintsugi fill-in here. And I'm using a combination of Golden Fluid Iridescent Fine Gold and Hansa Yellow just to give it a little bit more brilliance. And I put it in this little squeeze bottle that I got at Hobby Lobby with the fine point on it. You could also use a paint pen, but I like these bottles because it's more like a henna cone and it can give you really thick lines or really thin lines. So as you apply your lines, you can do it randomly. You can look at uh, pictures of broken pottery or, or things that have been repaired in the Kintsugi method just to give you some sort of an idea. You're just basically trying to make it look like it's been cracked. And uh, you can think about uh, sometimes it looks like a lightning strike because that's also a, a metaphor for, for how hard grief can hit your heart. And uh, also you think about the, the veins that are in a heart too. Um, all sorts of images come to mind as you work on the, the gold repair work here. So I'm just kind of trying to picture it in my head a little bit as I'm randomly placing this on here. Very fine line. And adding a few more to make it look a little bit more like a piece is cracked off. And you don't want to do too much though. That's about it for that one. You still want to see the, the beautiful dot work underneath, but also have this expression of, of fractures and scars. So I did that on all three. Different pattern for each. That's what's so wonderful about these. Each one is unique. And those dried overnight, and now I'm going to seal them with art resin to give them a glass-like like China finish on them. So I'm mixing up equal amounts of the art resin. It comes in two bottles and you can, I just use the cap as a measure and fill it up and I just happen to have these extra forks laying around. I'm just stirring it up till it gets to be opaque. And this is a Silpat. It's a silicone baking mat to keep things from sticking and I found that this works best when I'm working with the resin. 
And some people will um, cover the entire stone in resin and then lay it down. I found that that leaves a little bit of a pucker mark on the back of my stone. So I tend to just do the back side and uh, sort of smooth off the edges with my gloved hands and then I leave it. I set it down and leave it and I don't do the front until the back side has dried. And for me this just makes sure that both the back side and the front side of my stone is nice and glossy without any marks on it. Now be sure when you set this aside you have a place that's dust free, no cats, <laughs> no hair floating around and do not touch it for 24 hours. You are going to want to do that but don't believe me you're going to leave a fingerprint. So after it has uh, hardened, um, you can take this opportunity to sign your work or to, to write a person's name or to, to write a, a Bible verse or whatever you want to on the back. I use these paint pens and I will uh, have them in the comments. I found that they work very well and they don't rub off. And I may resin over that again just to make it permanent. In the meantime, I'm going to resin the front of the stones. I'm mixing up another batch here, small batch, making sure that it turns opaque. And then I'll just be applying that to the front of the stones. Rubbing it in really good, getting into all those little cracks and crevices, smoothing off the edges. And I will let that sit aside and cure for another 24 hours. And before I do that, I noticed that this uh, time I mixed it up, there were quite a few bubbles. So I'm just using a straw to blow out the bubbles. They come off very easily. Just blow it all around, turn your tray and blow it from another direction and those bubbles will pop. And then they're ready to sit overnight. So these are finished now. They've hardened and they're very glossy makes your design permanent. I found that it makes the uh, art stones harder so they're if you drop them they're less likely to crack and break. So I really like art resin. This is how they look. They're very glossy. They can be a little bit hard to photograph though if you're wanting to put them on Pinterest or on your Etsy page. They're a little hard to photograph with this, this much of a glossy shine on them. I, I think it really expresses the process of grief though, at least it did for me when I was approaching my year anniversary of losing my husband. I, I started making these stones and it just was really helpful and I decided to go ahead and do a larger project on a round canvas board um, in the red and um, I also did one in the blue just as I'm, I'm continuing to work through the process of loss. And I think art is a, is a wonderful way to express things that are hard to express in words. And I hope that this is helpful for someone else who is also experiencing a heartbreak. Thank you for watching, everyone.